And what is happening, folks? It is your boy, Blake Money, Blake Weather, a.k.a. D'Angelo, for tonight's All Intents and Purposes with another episode of Nine Nerd Yards Reaction Video. How is everybody doing tonight? Let's introduce the panel real quick so we can kick this off. You know him, you love him, straight out of the mean streets of Austin, Texas. It's Yodo Kid, a.k.a. Jeff. Jeff, what's going on, my man? Not much, brother. How about you? I'm doing great, bro. And of course, we have the man of the hour. Without him, we're not here. Y'all love his breakdowns. Y'all know him. Maybe y'all seen his face. Maybe y'all haven't. It's Nine from Nine Nerd Yards. Nine, how you doing, sir? Man, I'm just ricking and rocking. You know what I'm doing. Born, I'm born to die. Born to die, brother. Chicken and talking. You know Chicken and talking. <laughs> Oh, man, I love it. And just for those, as we get started, the reaction videos and these live videos or, or our reaction videos will not replace Nine's analysis and breakdown videos. So stay tuned for that in the next few days after this drops. All right. So just stay tuned. I just want to tell you that. Yeah, before still you reach out in the comments. Videos. Before you reach yeah. out in the comments, before you be like, nine, what is this bullshit? Who are these white people? I'm Mexican, first of all, so I just want you to know that. We have a story. <laughs> just me. He's just white. Yodo Kid is, yeah, that, Yodo Kid is what, what the name says, Yodo you know? Kid, he's, he's, he's <laughs> Was Yodo Kid going to be anything but white? Let's be honest, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that we get past the obvious business, let's talk shop. Episode three, season four, Born to Die, nine. Kick us off, man. Thoughts, post thoughts, all that good shit. Okay, so this is one that I definitely am going to have to watch again. Um, I, yes. I, I am a little bit <laughs> bewildered by them springing all of this uh, callbacks to season one, right? And then I, 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 I was really hoping to see D'Angelo. <laughs> I really wanted to see D'Angelo. I thought they were actually going to have a D'Angelo cameo. And, well, I mean, in Nine Year Yard, I mean, in uh, Atlanta fashion, they uh, definitely did not give us D'Angelo. A little bit disappointed in that. But uh, I don't know. Let, let's go around. Let's go around. I, I Let's let's see what everyone else thinks. Mm. Jeff, kick it off. What do you think? Well, you know, just kicking it off. I mentioned this to you guys when we were in a commercial break. Um, but – possibly my favorite opening yet oh was, yeah so the opening is good it was funny but it was still uh al being al i mean it hit all the notes i could have asked for for an opening to an episode especially one where like he's just did was it a bar mitzvah was it like something bigger it looked a little too big to be a bar mitzvah but he's walking off saying mazel tov and there's a cake with a with an uh, <laughs> a star of david thank you yeah. a star of david on it like it was it was just so funny. And then just the way the opening ends with him just being like, million dollars. And I'm then just there. cutting. It I'm was in perfect. That. Yeah, it was that, so that was really good. That's so great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, this episode, man, let, let's, let's, let's just call it like it was. We all experience D'Angelo, so I just want everybody to know that we are D'Angelo. We are D'Angelo. We are New Jazz, and we are D'Angelo. Or maybe D'Angelo's old jazz. Ooh, oh, oh, hey, whoa, 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 Jeff, why, here. why you gotta go deep? Why you gotta go deep? Ouch. This is just Atlanta. Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's really funny how um, in that opening we get Earn in his like consulting job. I didn't really think that he was doing like going into an office, you know, uh, being part of like a, a bigger conglomerate. I always thought like Earn was just like Al's manager and yeah. that's kind of it. Right. But yeah, no, he's like bigger. He's part of a bigger company. Well, so and, I thought uh, that was the L.A. company he's going for. Was I think that's the company that's going to move him out to LA. Like oh, that. they're yeah. going to move him out to. Okay. So yeah. that, yeah, that does make sense there. Um, but at that same time, we also kind of see that like, he's still an outsider and still acting out of spite. You know, they are like, Oh, yeah. you can't get like, go out and get 
D'Angelo or your Banksy's or whatever. I'm like, oh, D'Angelo is the uh, Banksy of uh, uh, Neo Soul, huh? <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, that is that kind of like tracks a little bit too. But um, he's still acting out of spite and still kind of like, okay, you don't think I can get D'Angelo? Let me let me prove you guys something. But he also, I mean, that that was that cut right there was also he doesn't fit in there, like clearly, mm -hmm. like it's 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 something that he kind of wants to do but like clearly he's just like bro this is this is shit like what like he's he's not like in the same way that i think paperboy might be disinterested with whatever he's doing earn seems disinterested with what he's doing and wants to do he wants to pursue something else and mm -hmm. like it's just like yeah like aren't we like doing something because like this shit is he he's able to see through the shit and then also mm -hmm. be like i just want to do what i want to do uh so like what if by the end of the season he makes his own company or does his own thing i don't really know but like i don't think he belongs here well and m more to that point did you guys notice what Ern was wearing compared to what everyone else was right he stood out yeah. he very he much stood out in a room full of real soft colors and it wasn't anything big it was just a black shirt with like this cool gold embroidery on it but it so stood out among all those people you know i could yes. make a whole separate video about atlanta fashion and just like <laughs> How, how they just kind of kill it. The color Everyone choices. Well, I know someone you're going to have to bring in on that. <laughs> All about the colors right here. Mm. But, One um, of my favorite colors. <laughs> um, now. That, uh, that, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, man. Well, I was going to say, did you guys catch um, what they were actually having that meeting about? Like, was it something like one of their artists had gotten into some trouble or something? So it was an author wow. got caught on a ring cam pulling a gun on a black kid that was just trying to do some fundraising. But oh. she comes out and she starts like putting a gun in his face. I got vibes of the uh, St. Louis couple. Mm. The, yeah. Say that again. The St. Louis couple during the Black Lives Matter, the, when all the protesters are just walking past their house and they oh, come and out with, the one with, with the like The ladies holding yeah. the pistol, limping <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just saw, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. I got those vibes from that. I, I right. feel that. So because also, like too, with that, that bold text that came across and sort of tells you the little side story as it sort of pauses the video in the background. Did you notice what was uh, in the upper corner, though? Now this. Which isn't now, that. Like, I see those videos on Facebook. All yeah, the now this. That's why yeah. with, with the bold yeah. wording yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I didn't know which channel yeah. it was. But, like, I'd seen those videos before. And they're yeah. very yeah. much pointed at, like, hey, like, this person treated this person bad and it's a lot of like is this racially motivated is this cops treating people bad is this like mm -hmm. you know like people mm -hmm. people pieces right pieces on people and like actual mm -hmm. like crimes that are going Calling on people against out, other people. Yeah. yeah that's what it is calling yeah. people out yeah i mean now this is like every time i look at now this it's like definitely something about uh like you said a crime or some shit or like you know a political slam or whatever some sort of in, yeah, like someone's yeah. like yeah well, do you know, here's the interesting part of it all, though. That was her house. That was her ring camera. Someone with mm -hmm. access to it gave it to the internet. Right. And I doubt it was her. Right. I think maybe, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> that's actually, that's actually. I'm guessing she's weird. got a kid who's a lot more uh, politically minded than she is. Savvy, yeah. Savvy. Or, well, or yeah. Or, what she would upload, the uploaded it and thought it would be a good idea to be like, hey, like, <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in the right. I'm here. in the right. Yeah. I can right. actually see that too. Yeah. Like, because wasn't the name yeah. of her book something like about like, so, so I was wrong? I think that was the name of the book. Maybe. The name of the book was called So I Was Wrong with a question mark on it. And so, like, I think she would think she's in the right here and would release that. Which right. would, I must have been I, looking at my like, phone or something. I did not catch any of those details. Look at, at the all. name oh, of yeah. the, the, the title time, of the yeah. book. I think it's called So I Was, so wrong, I was wrong? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that that, like, Atlanta is definitely going to make that. I, I bet it's already, like, posted somewhere where it correlates to something that happened in real life. Like oh, right. Right. there's oh, yeah. no way, and I bet the book title is something very similar to that shit. Too. I bet the title is so. probably like "You Think I'm Wrong," so you mm -hmm. think I'm wrong, something so like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you thought I was wrong. It's, it's also interesting you that thought. so Ern's being brought on. If we're right in our assumption here, it's not just music, let alone rap. I mean, she's just a, a book author. 
you know? Mm-hmm. So it looks like it's a very big circle that he's uh, getting brought into, mm-hmm. which is interesting because, yeah. I don't know, the big thing about that whole meeting, I don't know about you guys, but you, I got the vibes of uh, Get Him to the Greek. A little bit, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. A little bit. When, when P. Diddy's telling him what to do. <laughs> right. Which is even better. That's actually true, yeah. When you remember that in episode one, they were put, uh, they were petting furry walls. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, yeah. When was, they were in that dark room where they couldn't see anything, they're like, why is the oh, wall yeah, the the walls are furry? Yeah, and yeah wet? that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Passing through the music industry and shit. Uh, yeah, I love it. That's I love interesting. It. Or smoking the industry in general. Smoking yeah, smoking to Jeffrey and touching furry walls. Um. So, yeah, I, I he is get he gets tasked for you know finding, finding the angel like and yeah. then immediately he texts someone i saw the bottom text is like hey do you still know i didn't see who um, it was though i didn't see yeah i need to uh, go back and check, catch that but that no was, uh, I, I, very, tried to, like, I tried to no, stare. i know d'angelo's uh whoever Hair braided dress. d'angelo's hair. like yeah. three degrees i i, I can't, I'm, I'm going to do my what kevin it, bacon what uh, if it's uh, degrees? Degrees? Yeah. separation yeah what if it's bibby because yeah. someone that knows D'Angelo's, I believe, is that hair braider? Yeah, yeah. hair braider. It, so yeah. it was, could be, could be. It was interesting because I don't think it's important who it was because they didn't show the name, but they did show a conversation that Ern texted somebody was like, hey, what's the name of that pizza joint? Yada, yada. Somebody texts him the name, and then he, this is his text back, like, hey, do you still know yeah. how, D'Angelo's yeah, how hair braider or whatever? Later, yeah. yeah. Man, how Ern is that? Just texting him when he needs stuff. Mm-hmm. It's very earn, especially no. new, new school earn. Yeah, that's what exactly. exactly what I was gonna say. I mean, he's working like it would just suck to be a manager of like music people, though, wouldn't it? Especially your uh, cousin. I mean, yeah. Remember, like Al last season's like, bro, I need three hundred pieces of chicken. <laughs> Chicken all legs. Legs. <laughs> all, like all all legs, please. All drumsticks. I'm like, yeah. what? The old drumstick. I'm like, God damn, okay. And he just has to <laughs> get out of bed and just like yeah. And he's so it sickly. Yeah. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Of course he's got pain in his chest and shit. I, um, I want to point I want to point this out real quick. Oh I'll, I'll hold on to my thought. Go ahead, nine. I, I was gonna say, uh, it's also just like two episodes in a row we haven't had oh. band. Right. Yeah. Oh, um, that's a good note. And we we're still waiting for him to tell Van that he's leaving. So, hmm. I, I what I mean that might be subtle sort of like symbolism, like subtle mm-hmm. like she's slowly. We don't see her in the picture because she's not gonna be mm-hmm. as much in the picture. I don't really Until know. It blows up but, a bit. Yeah. Right. But you know what I do like is the blatant metaphors, a blatant like. Yeah, it's just blatant metaphors that they're throwing in episodes, right? Like, no way somebody is going to be, like, I guess, I don't know what a rallies is. I don't know if that's real, but, like, I feel like that should be Googled. But, like, it feels, it looked like a, a checkers. I've seen checkers. Yeah, I thought, I thought it, it was like. a checkers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but in no shape, way, or form is there going to be a back door where you're going to have to wait four days to meet somebody, like, it's it's clear. I mean, it's the surrealism of Atlanta, right? But like, mm-hmm. these are clear. This is like a clear metaphor. Like again, nobody's gonna get lost for six years in Atlanta <laughs> Central Station. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> these are but these are blatant metaphors. They're literally putting in our face to be like mm-hmm. represent representative of like an actual bigger point. Like exactly the actual yeah. bigger point of of the uh, Atlanta Central Station's like, dude, you can get lost in Atlanta, and if you're trying to escape, it's gonna yo, you're going to have to do some shit. You're going to have to get rebirth on the other side. In right. this case, like signing an artist, somebody like D'Angelo, it's going to be a process. You might not have to wait in a room and, you know, take your clothes off and like just kind of <laughs> get down to your skivvies and like, you know, like, you know, but fuck around with the door a, guys. Like, it's like a Banksy it's thing a to do, right? But a, like but if a, I wanted to meet Banksy, uh, it's going to be a know, process. That seems, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Go so, ahead, Jeff. You're saying something. So Rallies is real. Great. Okay. okay, good. It was on an episode of Undercover Boss. Okay. But uh what region? What like what uh region I have no is idea, that man. in? Uh, I mean I feel he like was probably confused that it was in but he said Rallies in Georgia. In Georgia. 
He was surprised it was, it was so in the state at all. Like it was in the state at all. And I've never seen the rallies up here in, uh, or, you know, Chicago, Northwest area. So, man. I'll bet you it's in Pennsylvania. I'll bet you he saw it when he was in college. Oh. Because yeah. I don't see him being in Europe. I mean, mm-hmm. but, but I'll say this. Um, think about the size of that back room and then the D'Angelo room. I think the entire restaurant was just the exterior was completely a front. It's a I don't front, think it was just yeah. like a room within it, you know? Yeah. Not really a rallies. It's not a rallies. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. No, not at all. Do you think that might um, be a subtle dig at rallies? They're like, man, no one's going to go here to eat. Right. Right. <laughs> right. People don't even know he exists. But I guess we're um, jumping the shark. I mean, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. But so after the opening scene, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, paper, Al gets offered that a uh, million dollars to mm-hmm. coach or like just kind of be a representative Team. of um, this um, dude's son. And he goes to the studio and this kid doesn't even know who he is. All these <laughs> Could new not kids. care less. And we got uh, um, Ricky Rockin we- who shows up and everyone's like dapping him up. We got the Yodel kid that's there. I can't even remember who like the actual kid who was going. What was his name? Benny. 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 Yeah, okay. Benny. Benny doesn't know who he is. All, he's kind of like in this new sphere of rap that is like very much TikTok rap. Uh, Paperboy a- asked him, "What's a uh, Ricky Rocky or whatever?" What's the Ricky Rocky? And yeah. What's the Ricky Rocky? Rick Moranis. The Rick Rock. Yeah. The, the Rick, Rick Rock. Rock. He's like, man, that's for the internet to find out. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that is actually how that shit. That works is right actually now. how that works. <laughs> that yeah. sucks. That sucks. I mean, because the internet. <laughs> Yeah, because of the internet. <laughs> oh, what a hey. subtle reference. Well, and mm. I think the interesting thing about that part is this also isn't the first guy Benny's dad has done this with. Because Benny's just like, man, that's cool. My dad's just trying to help. You can just sit over there and, and cash the check. So, like, this has clearly happened before. He so already has hell, money. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. the hell did Paperboard perform for, right? Like, was it a, a different son? Like, because yeah. obviously if you're the kid – Bro, you ain't going to be – I mean, unless you're a piece of shit, you're not going to be like, I don't know who Paperboy is when you just performed at my bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah or birthday or whatever, whatever the yeah. fuck it was. Like, you know, like, hi, motherfucker. Like, I'm Paperboy. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, come on. Well, also, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't a bar mitzvah when you're 13 or 14? Right. Yeah, that's that what I'm saying. That kid was not 13 or 14. They're not 13 yeah. or 14. No. No, no yeah, it's when you're young adult. It's usually around 13 or 14. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think um, you mean when you're a man. Get it right place. Yeah, when, I, yeah, I'm still waiting for my muscle top, apparently. So you know <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I thought it was just a subtle like, the fuck, like, well then who did Paperboy perform for? And like, was the dad talking I, about the same kid? I don't really. When know. I saw the trailer for this and I noticed that he was doing like a bar mitzvah or something, I really thought it was going to be a Dave cameo. <laughs> I was like, maybe Lil Dicky will show up and do like some Jewish shit and whatever. Oh, Which is re- really and, funny uh, that yeah. that that each season, you know, Dave season uh, two episode five is literally titled Bar Mitzvah. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. And and this one actually starts off with where I think uh, we're gonna assume that that's mitzvah, yeah. what it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Interesting. Well, and, but yeah. And also, like, look how much L is different. Do you think season one Al would have accepted this thing? No, he would have been so mad about the about his perceived lack of respect. There's not a chance he would have spoken with this kid. You know, right? Mm-hmm. Right. This right. One, he's happy exactly. to do it. I'll take that mill. I'll I'll bank that. I'll reinvest it. I mean, he's road. walking away, and he said a million dollars. I mean, a million dollars as I'm walking away, I'm turning around and seeing what's up. Right. He didn't even want to perform. punch me in the face. Okay, yeah. let's do it. He didn't want to perform for the Spotify people. Remember that? Like he's like, yeah. yeah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, at that point, I mean, Ricky Rocky is brought in by like Bunk, uh, and I swear, I think Bunk I, was right. I think you got it. His shirt's had Illuminati something on there. You think it was Illuminati, Illuminati sex? sex? Illuminati sex. Yeah. That'd have been crazy. <laughs> I know what your music is, <laughs> but but it's it's at this point, right? Like Al, sort of, and, and you know, like usually we don't do it this way, which is interesting because we're kind of going scene by scene, but like. It makes sense in the sort of context is like Al gets introduced to like the other manager guy who definitely recognizes him. 
and like they over a little smoke and toke he yeah, kind of like activity yeah yeah they kind of like he's like hey man like do you want to real really make money let's talk tomorrow because like this ain't it but i i can't tell you but i can show you and it feels like a fucking ponzi scheme oh, i mean yeah. absolutely like when he was like talking about like yeah i'm on like robin hood or whatever uh i'm that's where i'm investing all my money and shit right and he's like no that's not real money come come and we'll find out like at first i was just like dude is this going to be like a goddamn like Betty Wap, Betty Wap situation where he's like they're selling drugs at like festivals and shit <laughs> or is it going to be like was that Fetty Wap? I think that was Fetty Wap but it, or is it going to be like a forex a forex scam yeah like just like a hood ass forex scam and when I mean it definitely had the presentation of like if of you one. ever go to yeah like just a Ponzi scheme like they rent out the local motel six lobby room <laughs> and they get a bunch of their like pull out chairs and uh tables and just have one whiteboard and it's just like a very charismatic dude being like and like a, sli- a slideshow and right the whiteboard quotes. exactly and, and before the slideshow did you notice what the picture was it was a stick figure guy holding a gun on a stick figure woman <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> so, so great you know what I love to, especially giving the plate of cookies to Paperboy as they were at mm-hmm. the table. <laughs> oh yeah, just like a little slide over, just like man. Check, check uh, yeah, like, check these out, man. These are dope, okay. bro. And I mean, there and were what looked like, like he ate most of them. <laughs> <laughs> and there were what like seven people in the room, but the presenter even still did the the run up where he's like leaning in and running up like oh. <laughs> it, was awesome. it was every shitty presentation I've ever seen in my motivational life. like oh, Ponzi God. scheme person yeah. ever. And yeah, it's that it's a situation where he's just like me and my boys are going to be talking about it like tomorrow night you should come and i was like this is either going to be like a poker game situation or it's going to be a complete like pond some scammy some he's scammy. Going, yeah very scammy or whatever but what it turns out to be is that um these guys are pitching ywas and in that sense, they're not even selling anything. So it's like not even a scam. They're really just presenting like that. <laughs> they're not like they're actually just trying to communicate their information that way. I and I love how, how the solution was something YWA plus Grammy equals dollar signs. <laughs> equals dollar signs. Sign. Yeah, just like <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, and what does YWA funny. stand for? It? I was gonna say young, young white, white avatar. avatar. And this is why we keep this is why we brought Jeff on. <laughs> <laughs> a little fast. <laughs> by, by the way, if anyone needs, I'm like, available to be a YWA. Let's do this. Yeah. Hook this right. shit up. I can I'll even go for the go 40 the and 60 40 you know? split. Go to the game. Is your girlfriend pregnant? Is your girlfriend <laughs> when pregnant? Capri Sun? <laughs> she uh she was like real pregnant because She's got the baby at the end of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she uh I mean maybe that's going back to her like kind of like rebirth metaphors in this season so far, right? Could be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just we're just phoenixing this entire thing, huh? I, I mean I, again, I feel like the theme of, of birth and rebirth, I mean, happens all sporadically throughout this this episode, throughout the season so far. It's just a lot of like you go in one way, you come out another. Um, and, and, and we go back to, to the urn situation, right? Like urn actually, you know, wait, doing the whole weight thing with the D'Angelo situation go. And, and I pointed this out when we watched it, right? Like he went in and he didn't have, he didn't have the, the jacket on or the shoes. He literally went in with like, it was like his pants and like mm-hmm. his, his under, he immediately under just feet. crawled through. No, I, I don't know if it's like, like, what he was dressed yeah. in though. Mm-hmm. It's, right. it's what I'm pointing out. Like he had to leave all that worldly shit behind. I really like, again, they're like literally putting metaphors like straight up in our face of like, bro, like he's going to have to leave behind all this other shit to like try and make it through and be changed I, on the other I was side. actually getting uh, uh, a Shawshank redemption um, type of vibe from that. I could get you know? that. Uh, yeah. Just kind of had to crawl through a, river of shit to get to the other side <laughs> but um and it do frame <laughs> um but yeah i mean even like in the stages of like how they're talking about al's career 
Like you think that you're on the cusp of like OG. And uh, by the way, shout out to um, Chief Keith. Uh, <laughs> the Chief <laughs> Keith slideshow. I cannot wait for that Chief Keith kids movie. Cannot wait. <laughs> uh, Chief Kids. I, I'm, I'm trying to think about. I'll, I'll workshop it. I'll workshop it. By the way. <laughs> yeah, but like in those phases of like what Al's career is going through, like you used to speak for the streets or whatever, right? And then you may become the OG, but then you're going to be making like family friendly movies and shit. And you're going to be Ice Cube's friend in Are We There Yet Five, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Are they on five? I'm not. I'm not sure. But yeah. they're not they're yet. It, a TV but... show. <laughs> oh, they did. Yeah. They did. A um, G- that might be the fifth iteration. The next iteration might have uh, Brian Tyree in it. <laughs> oh my god! How amazing would that be? Uh, I'm paying for Ice boy, Cube, y'all kids. Ice Cube and Bar- uh, uh, Brian in that bitch would be actually. I'd, I'd watch that. I would watch that. that. I'll break I that down. Show. Wait, where were we on the episode? Um, so we're, we're kind of all about, over the place, but like uh, we're your t- and, and the end of the YWA meeting. YWA meeting. Um, but yeah, that is kind of like a trend in hip hop. I, I don't know how much like you guys pay attention to what uh, I don't know, the appropriation of hip hop and like how I mean, it's always been appropriated. I don't think hip hop is meant for just like black culture or at any means. But I think that TikTok is definitely changing. There's a lot of more industry plants, um, you know, people that have just kind of like been put there um, to say that they like kind of talk from a genuine heart, but they're actually just guided by other forces or by their industry or by their record label and kind of made to seem like they came up out naturally. Did did you catch the, uh, when, when they had the, they were all at the Grammys, um, and behind one of the dudes, uh, who's one of I guess one of the guys trying to be like, "Hey, paper boy, I'm here." Behind him, one of the dudes looks. I'm gonna go with like that is a a post Malone, a, like that was like, a post Malone guy. Yeah, that know, was post, post Malone, Malone guy right sure, there yeah. with the hair with the hair like that and the little mm-hmm. face tattoos. A white dude. And I'm like, oh, they make a okay. They're doing their own little post Malone inside of of Atlanta. I, I, I get it. What if but it makes sense? was kind of like a little dicky diss? I wouldn't be mad dicky. What if it. this was like a Dave diss a little bit? I don't know. Oh, it wouldn't that be would be place. kind of that would be kind of dirty, bro. This is <laughs> I, actually now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, it might. Ooh, maybe they're kind of <laughs> sneak dissing Dave right now. Wow. They better be careful. They're gonna have Kevin Hart coming after him with that shit. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. But did did we did we expect when? When Earn went into that D'Angelo room, like the dude was eating, was it a peanut butter, honey, and chicken skin sandwich? Is that what it was? It chicken skin because it, it looked, looked like, like kind of, off. yeah, it was like it looked like he ripped like there. cold, like cold fried chicken, just ripped the skin off and just put on the sandwich. Yep. And I mean, D'Angelo has definitely gained some weight since he was doing his thing, <laughs> right? But Man, you're not D'Angelo. <laughs> Man, you're not D'Angelo. But like from behind, I was just is, like, "Is it D'Angelo?" For and he's real? singing, and he's singing, and I'm just like, yeah. "Oh, bro, what?" Yeah. Let's, let's All right, here. did anybody think think about this? That was that dude that was in that room. Was he the one that originally wrote the numbers on the wall and the, by the waiting area? Do we think? Oh, interesting. Like now Wait, he's so he, the, he is like he no. Kinda... I was asking like, do we? think that that could be a thing it it could be i think someone else i think this is the thing with earned spite and you know the people that have been telling him that when he was talking to his uh company in the beginning and they said that oh yeah go find d'angelo and or whatever your banksy i think they've already sent sent somebody to go do this yeah right so okay. <laughs> he he's not recognizing that like okay you know what i i'm kind of like being played to do this out of spite and not realizing that like yeah other people have tried yeah. and failed no, I, I feel you man i get it yeah that makes so, I mean, that makes sense but that's that's so funny to, to think about the switch it like side that. 
if Blake's theory is correct, then that guy purposely put those marks up there. And I would assume the blood stain as well to mess with anyone going to try and keep them from trying too hard. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Also, where did he get a tennis ball from? Does Ern just bring a tennis ball with him? (laughs) I would. would. (laughs) It's for fun. It's for fun. Uh, but, but okay, so we and we also get this extra. I didn't. I, I we got the dream. We got the dream breakdown. First of all, this is just a deep scene. Everything's pretty like deep going forward. We get earn sort of uh, that dream breakdown from season one, episode one, with the seaweed yeah. where it's trying to grab him, mm-hmm. and the guy tells him the dream, right, and then puts peanut butter across his face like he's Simba. It says he's a protector. <laughs> I, th- I right. thought that was like him, like kind of offering him the communion of D'Angelo, you know? Yeah, like uh, <laughs> Ash Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, like Ash Wednesday. Or, and I thought it was kind of hit. I thought it was Simba reference be- because Donald Glover p- played Simba in Lion King. No? Oh, All right. shit. That's true. Yeah. You know? That is true. Just sort of just throwing Duh. that out there. Yeah, yeah, that probably is it. <laughs> I thought it was a subtle <laughs> reference to that. And then, but also yeah. like protector, protector of. What? What is Earn protecting? Who well, is he protecting? Pride Where's Rock. He going? Duh. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I thought you already knew, pal. <laughs> oh, you were in the net. <laughs> we are the yeah. Angel. Last eleven minutes. Let's see if we can sort of touch on any other other notes that we that we need to here. Um, but like, Paperboy, you know, going out to Avidly, try and sign him a white boy. And finding the one that's all up on perks. So <laughs> perks is something, man. Jesus, why would he? And uh, so we know that he he couldn't get Benny because um, homeboy already signed him, right? Mm-hmm. And then so he gets a uh, yodel kid, and he's puking at the high school, which is like I'm pretty sure that is also like a viral um, video. Now that I'm thinking about it, like of some fucking douchebag like showing up at a school and like throwing some money around um but he gets the little kid so do you think that he is the one that like gave him the song born to die yeah oh yeah it's kind of like right? a ready to die like uh reference to homage or reference yeah, yeah. I mean, and they were saying, you know, it went platinum in three weeks and something about 11 days, you know? Three weeks and then he's nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, yeah. insane. Billions. Um, billions of views. Yeah. You know, that reminds surprised. me of like a little, little Nas X sort of reference. I thought that was, that's what that was. I, I yeah, it almost felt like road that, type thing, but like, know, right? I mean, you know, like, we know the yodeling kid. In, right, yeah. Like, the actual Walmart real thing. life, so like, yeah. Yeah. I was surprised. I figured uh, after, you know, after being slighted by Bunk, because I'm just going to assume that's his name, because I I think you guys were right the first time. Mm -hmm. So he went there to help Benny. Bunk went there to help little Rick Moranis. I figured Al would have gone and tried to get little Rick Moranis then, Mm. just to be an extra level of petty. Facts. Facts. Yeah. But he didn't. Like, uh, and that's, and and he went for, you know, the funny thing was, by the time we get to the Grammys, like you see Al and you're like, "What's your angle?" Because you're not, I don't think you're putting out music, you know. And like, yeah. what's your game plan? Like, what are you nominated for? Or, yeah, or, or, but know. like in my head, I was thinking that I'm like, because you got one dude who's dressed up in black, another dude who's dressed up in white, and Al, his jacket has like black and white on it, which is like, mm-hmm. oh, like they do a lot of things with colors in there, as we were yeah. just talking about, and. um it, it it was like, but in my head, I'm like, what is what is Al's game here? And then it's funny that it gets flipped on his head as soon as he finds out, like, the other kid, the other kid's dead. <laughs> I That's expected amazing. Al was gonna go accept Dude, it though. So casually, too. so casually, <laughs> the other kid is dead. Yeah, his driver went to pick him up. I'm like, isn't Al managing him? Like, I had to do that But like he said, like it makes him sick. So that's also what I think that like. Uh, I, I want to give Earn some more credit to that. Like he's a busy dude. Like managing people would be sickening. Um, yeah, it would. Be, it, yeah, at that level, it would probably be very tiresome. It's, um, it's stressful. Yeah. So, uh, question for you guys now: Do you think that after all this, Al has more of an appreciation for Earn? 
Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, so. I think Al is, I mean, we're, we're about to see some shit with Al. He's he's on the verge of breaking down. Um, oh, but yeah. uh, if we go back to the um, conference really quick or like, yeah. the scam, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the Blue Blood reference. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like the Blue Blood reference. Like he was just like, man, listen. You like, don't want to be like Blue Blood. You think Y'all want to be like, like Blue Blood. I didn't even know that he had an album out until he was in the ground, right? Like, five months. That was five months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And he didn't. And then, like, how long. much longer it has been since uh, the Grammys happened or whatever. Like, I feel like this episode just spans. I mean, uh, yeah, it like has never, never been time consistent. And it, it is hard <laughs> to, to like try to put a timeline together, but. Obviously, like the shit going down with Urn is happening in like the span of a week, he says, and then the stuff going um, up with uh, Al, he's kind of like building his manager position, and that's happening um, from the time he meets uh, with Bunk to the time the Grammys. That seems like a, a few months, months have passed. Months, yeah, yeah, a few yeah. months has passed. So who knows? It's interesting. It's interesting, and then. I love the way that it ends too now with with Al just in the restaurant by himself and like just sort of at a place where I mean the Grammys are always aren't they always in LA you know what I mean like mm -hmm. or no am I wrong no, I think or, you're right man. I feel like yeah. they are so like we have Al in LA at some diner somewhere one in a, a city he's not from two in a place he's not usually at three he like all alone and like I love that what you just said, Nine. It's like Al's definitely on the verge of like something. Like, oh yeah, again, just like alone. How many times has he just been left kind of alone? And we linger. We have these lingering shots of him just like, I don't know what to do now. Yeah, right? I don't well, know. Yeah, and and remember the atmosphere of that restaurant too. I mean, they had like little crappy chandeliers we had in my house before, like when i was yeah. born it was it like a bunk so ass old. yeah <laughs> it was a bunk ass um so Which wait so earn would have had that place. meeting in yeah. la then he could have yeah he would have had that, that i'm thinking about LA it and then okay so but we know he was back in atlanta uh when he went to the rallies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's what i'm saying like i think everything yeah, kind of like popped off uh in like within a week uh, uh with earn's time yeah. And then everything like was way longer by the time we get to the Grammys in Al's timeline. I, I agree with you. And I, I think that the way we saw Ern interacting with Darius and Al, it felt like they hadn't seen each other in a while. And it felt like maybe Ern isn't Al isn't Ern's client anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the feel I got, but it just it I, I don't know why I picked up on that, but I did. I yeah. I felt that way like even just by watching the trailer I remember just feeling like I don't know if these guys are like actually completely working 100% together. together anymore. Yeah. Uh but like it is kind of like shocking to have him not roll out with Darius though. Like at least yeah. if there's Darius to have him be like uh I mean usually when it's you know Darius and them get split it's like some type of circumstances that split them. It's right. not Al's act of choice. Yeah, I mm -hmm. get what you're saying. There. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, last episode earns with Earn uh, drunk at a bar, like at his rap party uh, alone, <laughs> just in there. Like, I need to go back to therapy. This episode, uh, Al is alone at a bar and just like looking the out last, into the distance. The last three episodes have ended with somebody just being all alone. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, Kenya yeah. was Kenya. all alone. Kenya. Well, no, Kenya. no, she was not. <laughs> oh no, well, yeah, no. She, Kenya she, was, she was, she was alone. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. But like the alone <laughs> shot, right, of like her all alone. Yeah, yeah. This this shot of 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 Earn in a bar. Like all people are there, but he's essentially alone um mm -hmm. paper boy right at the restaurant that's like sort of like reminds me of like a restaurant like the 80s or something you know what that's i mean exactly like what I they probably about. make like mm -hmm. a mean hamburger and like a pot roast or something they always uh, have meatloaf right always meatloaf is a special of the day um 
I mean, that's what you're getting at, uh, Yodel Kid, right? Like, about it, the decor and everything, it did kind of seem like, you know, the shitty scene. Like, it seemed like the back bar of, like, a bowling alley almost. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really but they never weird. updated it because that's the Very charm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. It's got, it's got a certain, you know, da, 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 you know. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais yeah. But, yeah, and then, and then this one, Al's all sort of, there's, people eating at other tables but he's by himself essentially mm -hmm. by himself i think maybe not alone is right but by himself right you know I mean, yeah in the same time. sense that like Ern is like putting on this rap party but he's like in a sense just like by himself yeah and, and at that point like uh darius and al went off to just like kind of like yeah we're not going to really fuck with you we're going to be here <laughs> but we're not going to really fuck with you for this whole revenge plot and that which is so funny situation that... it's uh al being left by Arden and darius like now yeah. yeah you kind of tried to groom a kid to be your white avatar or whatever well, so and technically <laughs> it was al's revenge plot for yeah them taking benny oh yeah mm -hmm. exactly it's a spiteful season yeah, oh, on the theme. The spiteful yeah, season. Re spite, spite revenge. Because spite revenge. the lady, the lady at the end of the lady at the end of the first episode, like right, the white lady in the wheelchair. We, we wheelchair hear her follows. Getting, yeah, mm -hmm. we hear her. Yeah, wheelchair it follows. We hear <laughs> we hear her getting her revenge. Right. Mm -hmm. We see Ern at the end of his episode, sort of getting his revenge or his is sort of the way he got. And then we see Al at the end of this episode. He's in sort of the aftermath of it's aftermath of like revenge and how none aftermath. of them pay, actually pay off right yeah yeah this is we're getting deep we're getting deep now you're gonna do. need all this yeah <laughs> can we call this nine deep yards I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well this was uh such about a great to hit, call, about to call it uh 10 nerd yards because i'm at <laughs> 10k subscribers uh, oh it just happened hey, no it didn't just happen actually. oh damn i'm, I'm, I'm right i'm right uh, <laughs> but I, i'm almost there though I'm almost but when there. you release this it will have yeah maybe by the time you release this uh yeah, it's like okay. three three subscribers um since so um we're at nine nine five nine nine thousand nine hundred fifty nine. <sighs> tell your friend tell your friends to tell their friends and we can all be friends oh, no. and if you're, and this, <laughs> you're not subscribed how dare you <laughs> first of all, first of all, nine, nine is offended, and I'm offended for him. You know what? <laughs> As one should be. <laughs> I love it, but another great episode of Atlanta, um, and and just all kind of depth and layer. And I can't wait to see what Nine does as far as uh, an analysis and breakdown goes, because I still learn stuff from 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 his videos. So uh, I'm excited Insane, for man. it. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, Jeff, where can people find you if they want to talk to you about all things in the wonderful world of Atlanta? Uh, you can try finding Jeff Madel on uh, Facebook. Good luck spelling it. Uh, you can try and uh, Skype with uh, me at uh, Don Cheadle's driveway at littledicky2.com. It's because of the hackers. Mm -hmm. Or uh, we don't got wear face masks anymore. Find me in, in Austin somewhere. I don't know. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <Try it> out. <laughs> Nine. Where can people find the show, find your breakdowns, find anything that you're working on? Where can they do that? Well, you can find it right here on YouTube where you're watching this. And then also hit me up on Twitter and on Instagram and on uh, I, I'm making a TikTok. But also come and join the Discord. We have over 200 people in there just vibing, chit-chatting about Atlanta theorizing uh tell your friends yeah where can we find you man right here on niner yards oh so yeah if you, do, if you do want to come chat with me you could find me also in the discord community as money blakeweather or you can find me Money Blake, whether Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Nine Nerd Yards. This is a place to be. And <laughs> this is a place to be. Trying to figure uh, out those camera angles. I guess. Yeah. I was just like, like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Nine Nerd Yards. Yeah, I figured is, it out. Hey, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 w
Uh, 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 guys, look at the elbow. That's how you get the perfect high five. I don't, there's a little bit of lag. <laughs> it's all good, man. Oh, that was uh, but, good. That was fun stuff. But yeah, nine nerd yards is a place to be for all things Atlanta for all this whole season going forward. We thank y'all for tuning in. Look out for the analysis and breakdown. This is not the only thing coming out uh, in the next few days. So, yeah, look out for everything that Nine Nerd Yards is dropping. We love you. We appreciate you. And until the next time, we will see you. Peace. Peace.